Hello friends, I am Sanjay Gupta. In this video, I am going to discuss about the features of C++. So first of all, these are my details, my contact number, email ID, website, my app, TACMS, which you can download from Google Play Store, a link to download PPTs, various books, which I have authored, and my YouTube link. So you can use these information for your study. Now, features of C++. So as you can see, there are total nine features listed in this uh, slide. So first one is encapsulation, second data abstraction, third abstract data type, fourth inheritance, fifth type of inheritance, sixth polymorphism, seventh masses passing, eighth generosity, and ninth one is file streams. So now I'm, uh, I'm going to discuss uh, these features in detail. So first one is encapsulation. Encapsulation is a mechanism in which we bind the data or code together into a single unit which is called class. These data or codes are associated with a real world entity or an object. So you all know that uh, we consider a particular object with a real world entity. So if uh, we are using any object uh, in our program, it means we are implementing a real world entity. It prevents code and data from unauthorized access, external interface and misuse. An instance of an object is an object which represents a real world entity. So friends, the real life example of encapsulation is your mobile phone, laptop or any uh, device in which uh, you combine more than one parts into a single unit. Data abstraction. This is uh, the second feature of uh, C++. Uh, a data abstraction is a simplified view of an object. It only includes features that are required while hides the unnecessary details. In programming language, creating the new, uh, creating the new data type using the encapsulated form that is well suited to a program is known as data abstraction. So uh, I have uh, used some devices as uh, example of encapsulation like mobile phone, laptop. So uh, we can use these examples uh, for data abstraction also. So when you use your mobile uh, uh, and you press any key in your mobile phone or you uh, use touch screen in your mobile phone, so you do not uh, go into the detail uh, how touch screen works. Your main objective is to use touch screen. So you focuses upon uh, on the what part of the device instead of how. So in case of C++, we also focus upon what part of the problem instead of how. Next feature is abstract data type. So using the data abstraction, creating the new data type is known as abstract data type or ADTs, or we can say user defined data types. In object-oriented programming, it is implemented as a class. So you can say that class becomes abstract data type after its implementation. Inheritance. Inheritance is a mechanism to implement a new class based upon existing. In inheritance, one class acquires the properties of another. Programmer does not need to create everything from the scratch or from the beginning. It can build a new system by using functionality of an existing system. It provides facility to reuse the existing software components. So we can relate a word reuse with inheritance. So inheritance provides us a mechanism uh, so that we can reuse the already implemented classes into new ones. Next one is example of inheritance. So with the help of this diagram, you can see the example uh, uh, parents features and child features and arrow is indicating to parent features. So uh, parents uh, classes are known as base classes and child classes are known as derived classes. So we can say that the features which are available in base class are inherited in derived classes. Next feature is types of inheritance. So as you can see that there are total six types are available. Single inheritance, multiple, multi-level, hierarchical, hybrid and multipath. 
so we can implement any type of inheritance whichever required to solve a particular problem so these types will be discussed later in the tutorial related to inheritance polymorphism this is another feature of c++ polymorphism means that the same thing can exist in two forms so the word polymorphism means many forms for example consider you have to calculate area of three multiple shapes so you need to build three different functions for each shape with different names polymorphism allows uh, you to create functions with the same name to calculate the area of all the shapes so polymorphism is achieved by function overloading operator overloading and function overriding so all these three features will be discussed later in uh, tutorials uh, separately next is message passing the process by which an object sends data to another object or ask the other object to invoke a function is known as message passing in c++ code level message passing correspondent corresponds to function calling so uh, message passing uh, is equivalent to function calling for example in object oriented programming the expression for evaluating the square root of x takes the form x dot sqrt implying that the object x has sent a message to perform the square root operation on itself next feature is generosity it is a technique for defining software components that have more than an interpretation depending on the data type of parameters thus it allows the declaration of data items without specifying their exact data type compiler resolve these data types uh, generic data types at the time of their uses or we can say function call based on on the data types of parameters for example we can implement a swap function which can swap values of different data types like int float char etc in c++ generosity is implemented by using function templates and class templates so in short we can say that if we want to implement a function which can work for various data types or a class which can work for various data types that a feature can be implemented with the help of templates last but not the least file stream this is a very important feature file streams are used to store input and output of the program permanently as you have already uh, uh, studied uh, this feature in c language programmers has to write some extra statements to link a file with the source code a software will be able to work properly in real world if it has the ability to store its input and output permanently for future reference so this is important the uh, stored input output of the program will be used in future references so file stream is very important feature for any program which is written in c++ So these are my information thank you for watching this video